Hello and welcome to this demo lab on evading firewalls, IDSs and honeypots. So before we get into the evasion, I just want to show you a tool. The tool is Security Onion, um, which you can download off the internet and it's a great free IDS that's already pre-built for you. So it uses Snort <clears throat> and it also has a whole host of um, reporting tools built into it. So it's great, really, really great to get up and running very, very quickly and to help in your penetration testing. testing. So let's look at this. So the first thing that we have is, um, as you can see, it's already picked up a few alerts for me um, because it's been running for a few hours. But as you can see, there's an integrity check sum has changed. So if I click on that, I can see the signature. I can see that there's a possible Kali Linux host name in DHCP. So it's using integrity based rule checking as well as signature based rule checking. And it's also picked up an SSH connection attempt as well as somebody um, broadcasting Dropbox traffic, which would be against a information disclosure policy in an organization. You also have another tool called ALSA, which is a graphical tool, as you can see here. And basically, all it does is it shows you the top um, originators by IP address. It shows you the top responders by IP address. Um, and you can actually see exactly what's happening. You can also look at a tool like SQL, which is um, more, it's not a web-based tool, but it's also an application tool. And this one also gives you pretty much the same alerts as and when they happen. But for an example, if you look at this SSH insecure and click on display detail, it actually tells me where the identification string came from so that I can track it further. If I look at the Dropbox client, I can see exactly the packet information that it's pretty much looking to try and exfiltrate from the network. Then on this side of the screen, I have um, PFSense, which is a free firewall. This is the community edition, which you can download and install in a virtual machine. They also have applications or appliances rather that you can put onto networks. And I'm going to use the logging capability of the firewall to actually show you IP address spoofing. So if I go into system logs and if I look at firewall, I can see some traffic floating around. If you look carefully, here's that UDP Dropbox traffic that's being sent from 192.168.1.100. Great. So I'm just going to pause the video quickly and bring up Kali so that I can start showing you some spoofing attacks. Okay. So as you can see, I've got Kali up and running. So let's just quickly look at Kali's IP address. Um, it is ifconfig and it is 192.168.1.102. So what I'm going to do is just run an nmap scan and just a plain old nmap scan against this firewall, which is 192.168.1.80. Let's see what happens. So if I click on the dynamic view, I should start seeing some traffic start flowing through here. And I'm going to pause the video until it comes up. Okay, so as you can see, the scan took 34 seconds and my firewall is reporting 1.102 is scanning a whole bunch of ports, as you can see. Now what I want to do is pretty much spoof my IP address. So as you can see, it's giving me 102, which is my real IP address, but I want to actually spoof the IP address so that the firewall administrator doesn't come looking for me, but rather goes look for some other poor victim. And the command for that is this pretty much over here. So if you look at my command, here, it's, I'm going to run an intense scan just so that it creates a lot of traffic. But the command to pretty much spoof your IP address is this command here. So when, all you do in your nmap script is put a minus E and then your interface, in this case it's ETH0, minus capital S, and then the address you want to spoof. In this case it's 192.168.1.199. As you know, the address of this machine is 1.102. And I've set an intent scan because I want to generate a lot of traffic just to prove the point. So I'm going to run that quickly and then I'll come back and show you the traffic. Okay, so as you can see, the scan took 38.81 seconds. 
And if I now look at my firewall logs, you can see that it's reporting the source as 192.168.1.199. So the spoofing worked perfectly for my nmap scan and I've pretty much hidden my true IP address just by using the minus S minus E um, scripting options in nmap. Now I want to quickly look at Tor and um, proxy chains. So if I click Tor you can see it's not found so I need to install it and the command is apt get install Tor and now that Tor has installed we need to just make sure that proxy chains is on this machine so it's proxy chains and there it is okay so the way to pretty much do an scan or to use proxy chains and Tor and it uses very well for command line tools so what you'll do is you're actually going to route your traffic through the Tor network so this works very well for applications on the internet it's not probably not going to work at all for this um, internal firewall that I've got here. Unfortunately, I don't have an, in, an internet facing firewall that I can show you. But the command is, is pretty much first you get Tor up and running, it should be running already. Um, and once that's done, you then go and open up a new window. And pretty much let's run Tor again. And you can see that is address is already in use, Tor already running. Great. So now we're going to scan the firewall using proxy chains. Like I said before, this works a lot better for firewalls on the internet. But what I'll show you what the difference is. So you, you the proxy chain command, and I'm going to use nmap again, is this one over here. So it is proxy chains and then the and then pretty much the script of the tool you'll be using. In this case we're going to use nmap you're going to use a minus st and a minus pn because these are um, the requirements to use proxy chains because it needs to make a full connection it needs to do a full scan it can't do a stealth scan because using proxy chains for scalf anyway so and then minus p and minus n and then the ip address of the server so as soon as i hit enter here you will see that the scan has gone through and this is what it looks like when it's going through proxy chains so it goes through to 127.0.0.1 which is the local host port 9050 which is the Tor port and then eventually via the Tor network it comes back and these are the, all the ports that it scanned as you can see it's a lot more verbose than a standard nmap scan because it's using proxy chains and proxy chains is telling you exactly what it's doing and at the end of the day you can see it took less than a half a second so it probably didn't go through the Tor network but what's interesting to note is if you actually run this test and look at your firewall logs by running it through proxy chains it doesn't really come up on your pfSense logs anyway which is actually very very interesting so I mean let's just scroll down and make sure and as you can see 102 hasn't come up at all and I've been testing this for the last 10 or so minutes and nothing has come up so proxy change is a good way to hide and evade firewall logs in the real world and I hope that this um, demo has shown you more or less how to get started in evading IDSs and firewalls etc. So I highly recommend that you get Security Onion and install it and then test your penetration testing exploits and scans etc. against it to see what alerts are created so that you can create plans to evade them and same with the firewall. PFSense is a very very good firewall, an excellent firewall in fact and using the logging capability you could pretty much see exactly what the firewall admin would see when you are doing your penetration test. So that pretty much ends this and thank you once again for watching.